It's a two-day workshop. Uh, the session, the lecture from where I have taken this, it's a two-day workshop in which we cover how you should read an APG. Means you have a blood test before you. You should read what where it is hypoxemia or metabolic acidosis, asthma, asthma. Second part is interpretation of that APG and what you need to do it. And third is the mastering tips. So obviously, two-day workshop to compile in thirty minutes. It's a little bit challenging. But what I have done is I have made it in such a format that. Part one and part two is mostly covered in these thirty minutes, so we will give a, get a brief idea about how to approach a blood gas, and then obviously you can dive in and read from multiple texts or any doubt you can uh, send to the moderator here, and she can share the doubts with me, and I'll be happy to reply. So first we'll think of reading an ABG. Uh, sorry. So how you should approach an arterial blood gas? So in arterial blood gas, first thing before sending not any investigation, it applies to arterial blood gas also. You should think, you should anticipate why I am sending this investigation. What is expected in that particular investigation? If suppose it's a COPD patient, you want to see it's a PCO2 rising trend. How much is the PCO2? If you sending for a diabetic ketoacidosis, you want to see how much is the lactates, how much is the uh, nine gap, what are the bicarbs. If you are anticipating a, a hyperventilation syndrome, you need to see how much is the PCO2 or what is the pH. So whenever you are sending an investigation, first thing you should anticipate what the report will come and how I will act on this. If such and such report comes, I will do in this. I will act in this manner. If such reports uh, comes, I will act in a different manner. Now comment on the oxygen. Uh, now the steps. Now whenever you receive an APG. You should always check the validity. I am not taking that validity part because it's a detailed one. But most of the machines which are there in our ICU are pretty fine calibrated. So now the issue of validity has drastically reduced. <coughs> most, mostly ninety to ninety eight percent of the blood gases are uh, valid enough to interpret. Now, second point is whenever when you read an APG, you should comment on the oxygen status because if oxygen is not there, patient can't survive. Third, then you need to look at the ventilator status, and after looking at the ventilator status, you should comment on the acid base status. And in the final step, you will cover up, uh, you will compile, correlate all the data, and then. Uh, you sum up and come up with a conclusion. This patient is having this. So we'll start with the. Oxygen status. Now, oxygen status means the ABG tells you PO2 means partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. It's the blood because it's in the blood. That's why the level is there. It is oxemia. So, first you need to check the oxemia. Second thing you should see is what is expected. Means suppose I have given giving five liter of oxygen to a patient. What should be the PO2 level in this? Suppose I am giving hundred percent FI to a patient. What should be the oxygen levels? If there is a discrepancy, then you uh, dig in detail into it. And thirdly, for maintaining that oxygen level, how much the patient is putting effort, cost of breathing, get it? So, oxygen level, the normal PO2 levels are eighty to hundred. If the patient is on the room air, then if it is sixty to between sixty to eighty, it's mild, and fifty nine to forty is moderate, and less than forty is severe. So these things, most of the you know that how you should how you, these are oxygen level absolute values. You don't need to change anything. If the oxygen level is sixty five, you call it mild hypoxemia. If the PO two levels is less than forty thirty five, you call it severe hypoxemia. We are not talking about the cause. You we are just labeling that patient is having severe hypoxemia. Now after that, expected and observed. So expected and observed, you can remember by this simple formula. We are on room air means twenty one percent of oxygen, and at room air our oxygen level is our oxygen level is eighty to hundred means five times the value. So if you are giving hundred percent oxygen to a patient, you should expect that this patient should have five hundred percent five hundred PO two in the blood. That's simply if your patient you are giving forty percent PO five uh, to a patient then. Uh, 
five times of forty is two hundred. So two hundred PO two is expecting. If it if you are PF ratio is not in that range, five times not the FiO two, then you should go in and look in the causes. Now this is very interesting. You can note it down or you can take screenshot also. When giving on ventilator, on ventilator there is FiO two predefined that uh, it is forty percent, thirty percent, fifty percent. But when you are giving patient O two by O two flow meter, one liter, two liter, three liter, so how will you uh, convert into FiO two? So on room air it's twenty one. One liter is twenty-four, two liter twenty-eight, so four four increments. Three liter thirty-two, four liter thirty-six, and up to eight liter you can. Above eight liter it doesn't uh, increases that much until unless you are uh, giving a through a reservoir bag. So in reservoir bag it can go up to sixty, seventy, eighty percent also. So if it is on flow meter you can compare into FiO two and then uh, can <coughs> calculate. Now. Lungs are normal or not? Whether this PO2 is due to problem in the lung or outside the lungs? For that, you need to calculate the PO2 gradient. This is the formula. You can again take a screenshot, and when you calculate this uh, uh, this PO2 uh, L, uh, uh, arterial gradient, you need you identify whether the oxygen which is coming in the alveoli is getting diffused into the blood or not. What are the condition in which the lung will be problem? If there is a pulmonary edema, if there is a ARDS, or if there is a blockage, that means something is coming into the alveoli and it is not getting uh, dispersed into the blood. If the lungs are normal and the patient is having hypoxia, you need to think of non-respiratory causes like uh, central causes. The patient is hypoventilating. That's why the patient is not ventilating fully. Mm, the, there is a bradypnea. Bread, That's why uh, there is a, or a neuro patient. There is a stroke patient. So in such cases, your lungs are normal, but patient is not breathing properly. So this is the idea about commenting on um, oxymia. What is the absolute oxymia level? How much is expected, and whether lung is an issue or not? Cost of breathing. <coughs> always look whether it's tachypnea. You can have two patients. One patient is having 88 percent of oxygen. Uh, one person is having PO2 of some around somewhere around uh, 70. Respiratory rate is 60. Other patient is having PO2 around 94, but the respiratory rate is 30. So, though the second patient has PO2 more in the blood gas, some 90, 95, but the tachypnea respiratory is not uh, is not uh, uh, good. Patient is putting lot and efforts to maintain that oxygen level. So, always look the oxygen status in terms of with how much the, how the patient is uh, putting effort. So now this is the thing: oxygen level, mild, moderate, severe, PF ratio for routine. If you want to deep dive in, I'm alveolar artery gradient. In our workshop, we make we make uh, students to solve this by calculating alveolar artery gradient. It's an easy thing. Just note down the formula and start practicing. 